Hey guys, this is Ed with the Kaizen Effect, and right now I'm actually on a trip up to Boston to take care of some personal business. And what I want to talk to you about today is not only a fun topic, but a very practical topic. And this is the idea of not only making time, but taking that time, pouring it into your goals and your purpose, and using that as effectively and efficiently as possible. Now, if you've been following my videos, um, I've mostly been talking about a lot of foundational topics, which are intended to take place and instill this type of uh, framework at the beginning of your journey, such that you know what you want, how to get it, and once you execute the plan you put together, it's almost like a foolproof plan. You're going to run towards your dreams and increase the probability that you will succeed. Now, in my previous videos, I've been teaching concepts such as you know putting together this nice, robust uh, framework in terms of how you perceive things, how you paint your picture of reality such that it works with you and always gives more than it takes. And I've explained how that can help you uh, take control of your life and lead it in the direction that you want to go. I've also talked about the path of least resistance and how that can take your abilities uh, and your, your traits what makes you a great person and can deteriorate that because that's the path towards atrophy where you don't grow. And I explain how taking the path of most resistance can build you up into somebody who's greater than uh, like your wildest dreams, whatever you could have imagined yourself as being. And the third topic I've talked about already is the topic of forging your life purpose. Why it's so powerful and how when you're on your life purpose and you're doing things just to do it, you become somebody else, you change. You become this individual who's impervious to the greatest trials and tribulations of life because you've instilled this idea that you love so much and you've bought into it and you know kindled this nice fire behind your eyes of your passions that you're willing to put in the time and effort to push through the greatest obstacles and get things done. So that's the, the, the starting point of your journey, okay? That's going to put this nice inner framework inside of your body that's going to allow you to persevere and get things done when you actually execute it. Now what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna start transitioning into the execution phase, okay? And this is the fun part where you, know, you take massive action and be proactive with the plan you forged, the plan that I've helped you develop along the way in the Kaizen Effect, and you put it to action, okay? This is where your dreams become tangible in front of you, and for that reason, it's very exciting, okay? But before I tell you how to do that, how to execute your plan, and how to take action, what I wanna do is motivate you as to why you should be caring about this topic, why time should be your most valuable asset, and then I'm gonna talk about how you should schedule your time, how you should arrange it, such that you can make the best use of the time you're given. Now, the first thing I wanna talk about is why time is your most uh, valuable asset you have, okay? Maybe somebody might think money is very valuable, maybe your material possessions, maybe your car, your house, and these are important things. But what I'm gonna tell you is that time is your most valuable asset, and you should never throw it away like it's something that's plentiful, okay? You should value your time. You should never, ever undervalue it, okay? And in order to motivate this, uh, we have to ask what makes something valuable, okay? So the example I'm gonna use is gold. Obviously, we all deem gold as a valuable asset, a valuable material, right? But why is that? And that's because uh, gold is very valuable because you know it has very rich qualities about it that we value, okay? And it also has this inherent scarcity about it. So let's take a look at the first idea here. Gold has a lot of qualities that we value. What are those qualities? Okay, it's shiny, it's durable, um, it's you know it's nice to look at, and for that reason, it's very great for jewelry um, and showing off um, and being used as a source of royalty and to distinguish somebody from somebody else. Okay, so there are a lot of inherent qualities of gold that that give it just this nice rich um, value to it. The other thing that makes gold very valuable is the fact that it's scarce, okay? It's not plentiful. If you go outside of your house and say, I wanna find gold, your luck of uh, actually achieving that goal, it's, it's very low, your success rate. 
So in order to attain gold or to find it, you have to go to certain locations where it's plentiful. You have to engage in um, very expensive mining techniques that take a lot of time and effort. And you know, it's not something that is readily accessible, okay? Unless you have a lot of money and you could buy it in this day and age. So for that reason, that inherent scarcity that's imbued inside of it makes it valuable. In order for something to hold value, for you to deem it as something worth your time, it has to have this opposite effect. It's like the yin and the yang, okay? Without the scarcity, you don't have that value inherent to it, okay? And this is just like time. Obviously, I'm sure you all can agree, time has a lot of inherent qualities about it that makes it very valuable, right? Um, it's the thing that allows you to get closer to your goals and dreams. You can be at point A, want to get to point B, but the only way that's going to happen is if you take your time, invest it properly, and drive that into your goals and the actions you have to take to make your goals flourish and become tangible in reality, right? So, you know, it has this inherent quality to it that makes it very valuable in and of itself. But the, the um, quality it has that makes it the most valuable, I think, and the most valuable resource we have as humans is the fact that it is the most scarce resource in your life and the most limited resource. Why is that? When we're born into the world, um, we're given a, an allotted time. You can't cheat that. Okay, maybe you can have better health and that can increase how much time you have on this planet. But um, in the long run, you know, you have an allotted amount of time and that's all you're given. Okay, unlike gold, you can't go out and get more. Okay, you know, oil is valuable because it gives us energy, it fuels cars. Um, and it's limited in the sense we have a limited quality, but we can always go out and mine more. Okay, we can always go out and get more oil or gas if needed until it runs out, of course. But time, we can't do that. And for that reason, it makes it so valuable, okay? But, you know, we see here that time is very valuable because it has these inherent qualities and it's inherently scarce. However, a lot of people frivolously throw away their time like it's nothing, like it grows on trees, like it's plentiful. And this, this begs the question, why? The answer to that question is because people do not respect their time. And this is very problematic if you're at point A and you wanna to get to point B as effectively and quickly as possible, and you wanna bring your dreams into reality. If you buy into that and you want a better life for yourself, okay? It's problematic because if you don't value your time, you're not going to find the time to do the things that are most important to you. And as a result, the things you want to happen are not gonna come into reality. So the first thing you need to do is learn to value your time. It is the most valuable asset you have. Do not waste it, do not frivolously throw it away like most people, okay? And uh, to show you how people throw this away like it grows on trees, which is absolutely absurd, um, I'm gonna dig into what people typically do with their time. And this is sort of related to my video uh, on the path of least resistance, which you can watch right here. If you haven't watched it, I highly recommend you check that out. But the main idea here is that people like instant gratification, okay? They like to go into an activity, get instant pleasure out of it, and see outcomes right away, regardless of whether that's a quality outcome or a poor outcome. That's not going to fuel what the person wants to achieve. And for this reason, people fall into that path very easily because they want that instant gratification. And people do this with time all the time. And as a result, it's thrown away very easily. What examples can I use to drive this point home for you? Um, I think the greatest example of, of this is, the, is television, okay? Sure, there are some good things on television. I usually bash television. But I think the thing I really bash the thing I really don't like is the fact that television is used in a way that it, 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 like, it burns your time. It just literally burns it. Here's a statistical fact for you. On average, the typical American watches television every single day for five hours. I'm gonna repeat that. On average, a typical American watches television for five hours. 
What are you doing, man? What are you doing? Hey, this is not a valuable use of your time. That's throwing your time away because you're investing it in being somnambulistic, of avoiding the duties you could be doing to be getting ahead for instant gratification that is expedient in the moment but is not going to get you to the destination you want to get to. Okay? Uh, that's absolutely ridiculous. If we take this a step further, five hours every day, in a given week, the typical American wastes 35 hours in front of a television not investing their time wisely. Do you know how much time that is? That's almost equivalent to the time that's poured into somebody's job, somebody's salary, right? The typical American works 40 hours a week, okay? And they spend the same amount of time in front of a TV. What are you doing? If you wanna get ahead in life, you need to cut this out, okay? TV is like freaking Medusa. Don't look at it. It will turn you to stone. It will prevent you from taking action. Okay, in order to make your dreams come into life, you need to get excited about that. You have to have a passion burning inside of you and that has to compel you to take action. Okay? I, I hear about people doing this, whether it's television or computer games or anything like this, which are inherently good in and of themselves if used moderately, but when they're used in a disproportionate manner that throws your time out the window, this is this has to go, okay? So don't look at it. It will turn you to stone like freaking Medusa. You need to be disciplined. You need to buy into what you're doing so much that you'd rather sacrifice that, kick it out of your life, than invest your time in it and get lost in that, or rather get turned into stone and be unable to move, take action, and bring your dreams into reality, okay? The other thing we wanna look at here as another example, um, like Facebook, social media, um, Twitter, Instagram, stuff like this, okay? These are technologies, okay, I get it. These are awesome, I use them, okay? I have a smartphone, I use a smartphone, I love a smartphone, it makes my life convenient and enhances my life. But these technologies are intended to enhance your life, they're not imp intended to be an impediment that pushes you further and further and further away from the dreams that you wanna make a reality, right? So, you know, don't be engaged in that. If you have to, get rid of them, okay? As I said previously, this is like television. It's like freaking Medusa. It will turn you to stone and you'll be unable to take action. So here's a challenge for you you can take. You can take it if you want, or you can take another route to eliminate these things from your life or significantly limit them such that you can make time for yourself, take that time and pour it into the actions we talked about in, 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 in your purpose, right? Such that your dreams can become a reality and you can be happy in a sustainable manner. What I challenge you to do is take all of your social media and deactivate it. Deactivate your Facebook, deactivate any profiles you have online, maybe your Twitter, your Instagram, um, turn off your TV, don't turn it on, read a book instead, okay? Or take that time and use it to take the first steps towards realizing your dreams and your passions. Fuel your purpose instead of taking that time and literally throwing it out the window. And, you know, do this maybe for a week and take the time to reflect on what it does for you. I did this when I was starting my journey way back when, which I'm sure you've heard of in different videos. If you haven't, um, check them out. I'm going to be putting out a video in which I explain my journey because I'm starting to move on to a different journey in my life. But I did this in the beginning of my journey. I deactivated my Facebook. I got rid of uh, stuff that would waste my time and I invested that in valuable things such as reading, such as studying, such as getting closer to the dreams I want to get to. and. What I did, uh, you know, at the end of the, the deactivation period I had, I reflected on it and I realized a lot of things. I was clearer, I was more on point. Um, ironically, taking away Facebook, I was more social. People wanted to talk to me more instead of talking to me on stuff like Facebook and talk to me in, per in person, that's what I meant. And in general, I was happier, I had more time, 
and I was moving ahead at an accelerated rate, okay? So take this challenge, um, pour your time into your purpose, and value your time. Time is your most valuable asset. Do not underestimate how valuable your time is. Respect it, respect it. When you take actions, ask yourself, is this a valuable use of my time? Is it not? If it isn't, get rid of that activity or significantly limit it such that when you engage in that activity, it's in, you're engaging in it in a moderate fashion, okay? And take that time and instead pour it into things that are really valuable to you, such as your purpose, your goals, and the things that you want to be tangible in your life. Or maybe it could be used for a loved one to make more time with that person. Or who knows? You choose. This is your life, okay? And you want to create a life that is better for you. know how valuable your time is do not waste it do not throw it away frivolously in activities that are not going to get you from point A to point B where you want to go use your time wisely and strategically and pour it into your purpose and your goals okay there is no excuse for not being able to meet your goals or not having enough time for it which is the typical excuse that everybody makes why because no excuse is good enough. No excuse is good enough because there's somebody out there who's beating your excuse, who's putting more time into the same goal to get to the point B that you wanna to get to, and because they invest more time in it, because they're working when you're sleeping, because they're putting in effort when you're watching TV, because they're running that extra mile when you're on Facebook, they're gonna to get to point B quicker than you, and they're gonna show you up no matter what. There's gonna be no competition, okay? Um, the greatest example of this is Rocky. What did Rocky do? Rocky wanted, to, he wanted to, to beat that all-star when he was going up for boxing. So he had this opportunity to fight this guy um, who was out of his league, much better than him, and he had a chance at the world title, right? You know, his chances of, of winning were very low, but he put in the time and he wanted it. He made time when there was no time. Okay, I'm gonna say that again. He made time when there was no time. Sometimes you can't find the time. Sometimes you need to make the time, okay? And how did he do this? He did it by waking up early, an extra hour early or something like that. Waking up in the middle of night to 
you know, first wake up, take protein, eat raw eggs, and then go running, working out. What other thing? Uh, he didn't have time to go to the gym and maybe, you know, do his, his boxing. So he went to a freaking meat house and boxed on frozen cattle when it smelled, when it was uncomfortable. And he was dedicated to things. He didn't find time. Okay, sometimes you can never find time. I get that. We all work jobs. We're all busy. Uh, you know, we all have to take care of things. Maybe we have kids. We have responsibilities. I get that. But if you buy into your, your purpose and your goal so much, and there's a fire burning behind your eyes, you will make the time. You will make the time because it's so important to you and because doing the thing that you want to do, that you need to pull your time into, is something you love so much, you will find that time. You will make that time, okay? You will make it. You will find a way to make the time, okay? So Rocky did that, you know, he made the time as best as he could. He woke up early, uh, maybe he lost a lot of sleep, but he put in that effort and that dedication while the guy who was supposed to be uh, the person who's going to win no matter what was throwing his, his time away previously. He was in an office bullshitting with people, um, watching stuff on television or taking care of papers or things like that, and not training like Rocky. And as a result of that, what happened? He got showed up in, in the ring. At the match, he almost lost, right? He almost lost. So, you know, you be like Rocky. Be disciplined. You might not be able to find the time, but if something is important to you enough, and it will be important to you if you take my steps, you know, uh, in my previous video of forging your life's purpose, of buying into that goal, the goals you have, and connecting it with your values, such that it's something you do just to do it. Something that you love, that gives you pleasure and joy just from doing it. If you do these things, you know, you're gonna be compelled to make that time. So you just need to do it, okay? So what can we summarize what we've learned here? Um, you know, time is your most valuable asset. Do not throw it away frivolously. Respect your time. Realize that it's scarce, that it's limited, and take the time you have and pour it into the activities you need to get to point A to point B. Take your dreams and make them tangible in your life, okay? So you wanna take massive action, be proactive, make that time, pour it into those actions, and uh, you know, get closer to your goals. Get pumped up, get excited, okay? This is the execution phase of the Kaizen Effect. This is where you take action, where you see results, where you see all your hard work unravel in front of you, and uh, get you to where you wanna be. So be dedicated, be disciplined, make that time. And uh, you won't only love what you're doing because it's connected with your purpose and the things you love and the things you value, but you'll get to a point in your life where you wake up every day and you'll be genuinely happy. Happy in a way that's sustainable, okay? And you know, there won't be any room for being depressed. There won't be any room for feeling terrible. Yes, you will have hiccups, but you have to have the discipline to learn from those hiccups, take as much as possible from them. And uh, once you get on this upward spiral of going up and up and up and uh, take action, make the time, you will lead the life you want to live, and uh, you should be really excited. I'm excited for you. If you follow these actions, you will be on the right path.
right, now that you know how valuable your time is and how you should respect it no matter what, what I wanna show you now is once you make that time, how to take that time and schedule it in a way that's not only effective and efficient, but also allows you to get to your goals in the most expedient way possible. And to do this, I wanna start by first telling you a parable and then relate that parable back to the principles I'm going to teach you. So this, for this parable, let's suppose that um, you're considering uh, the life of a farmer, okay? And let's suppose that this farmer is, you know, he's very modest, very meek, and he lives a very simple life. He wakes up every day, he does his duties, gets them done, and then, uh, you know, goes to do some leisure activity, okay? His life is very simple. Let's also suppose that one day he comes across a black goose and he decides to take care of that black goose. Well, eventually, after a few months, what happens is he goes to bed, wakes up, comes down to feed the animals, do his farm duties, and what he finds is that in the black goose's cage, he finds a gold egg. And at first, just like you and me, he'd be super surprised, right? You'd wish that you could find a gold egg, right? So he's sort of doubtful that this is real and goes to get it appraised. So he goes, goes through the appraisal process and finds that it's solid gold, okay? Now at this point, you know, he's gonna be very ecstatic because he's very modest, he leads a very simple life, and this is like finding a fortune, okay? So what he does is he takes that and uh, invests it, and does some great things, start, starts living a more luxurious life, and let's suppose that the next day he goes to sleep, wakes up, checks out the black goose, and he sees a golden egg again. So this process keeps going on and on and on, day after day, uh, for months. And as a result of this, you can imagine the farmer becomes quite wealthy. Um, now, in order to allow the goose to continue producing these gold eggs, what the farmer does is he makes sure that the goose has proper living conditions. So he gives it a better cage, better food, and uh, he really cares for it because this is giving him a fortune, okay? But one day he starts thinking, hmm, if the golden eggs are inside of the black goose, what happens if I kill the goose? Then I can get all the black eggs, right? So after that day passes in the morning, he wakes up, he goes down, he kills the black goose, and he decides to cut the black goose open. And when he does that, he's surprised to find that there are no golden eggs inside of the black goose. And unfortunately, what he did here, he let uh, his greed take advantage of him. Okay, he destroyed the machine that was producing his wealth. And as a result, he was left with the golden eggs he got, but he couldn't create any more fortune in his life. And uh, as a result, he has that kind of limitation on him. So what he should have done is continue caring for the goose and uh, kept increasing the producing capability of that goose, and that would have led to better results. So why am I telling you this parable about a farmer and a goose? I know you're wondering that. If you are, thank you. That's a good thing. Um, so the reason why I'm doing this is because it's a very nice metaphor for how you should structure your time in order to get the best results, okay? So when you take your time and pour it into different activities, there are two subsets you can pour that time into. There are a set of activities that are productivity-based, the production activities. These are activities such as work, which you pour your effort and time into that, you get back a salary, and you get something for it. Or it could be uh, maybe your hobbies. Um, I'm a musician. I like recording things and putting together compositions, so I could take my free time, pour that time into uh, practicing guitar, composing things, and then I could record those, those tracks, and then at the end, the reward is I have those, retracts, those tracks for me, and it produced something, okay? So with these activities, you pour time into them, and they're able to produce something that you get out of them. So this is taking your time and making um, productive use of it. There are also activities which I like to call uh, productivity capacity activities. Now these are activities you engage in in order to increase your capability 
of producing things. For example, um, if you have some kind of job that is contingent upon your physical prowess and abilities, then if you invest your time and energy in going to the gym, getting bigger muscles, getting more endurance, um, what's going to happen is you're going to be able to produce more, right? When you go into your work that requires you to be strong, uh, you can probably do things a quicker amount of time, right? It doesn't take as much time to do the same amount of thing because it's not as strenuous because you're more used to it from your conditioning at the gym, right? What are other examples of this? Other examples, maybe if you're more of a school kind of guy, uh, maybe you could put some time and effort into studying some kind of subject such as mathematics. You, know, you can spend time doing all these problems. Maybe you can solve these integrals, practice your integration, practice your differentiation. If you don't know what those things are, that's fine. It's basically a subset of math. But the main idea here is that you're pouring energy and time into these activities and that makes you a better mathematician and math student. So when you go to actually um, produce results such as grades or do your homework, it might take you 30 minutes to figure out all these problems as opposed to an hour. So you can see here, these kinds of activities that you pour your time into, they boost your ability and capability to produce things. So for that reason, I call them producti productivity, um, production capability, sorry about that, activities. So in order to get ahead in life, you have to prioritize your time, schedule it, such that you get done the activities that produce things, but also allows you to increase your production capability at the same time. So what kind of schedule is optimal for this? Well, what, what I will say is um, we need to back up a bit first. We need to rank activities in terms of importance and um, urgency. Now, if we take something that is production-centered, it's very important because you know, you're producing something that's valuable to you and probably allows you to live. So it's important. These are things such as your work. And they're also immediate because if you don't get them done, then you're in trouble, right? You might not be able to have rent for living. You might not have money for buying your food to survive, right? These are essential for survival. Examples of these are work, again, as I just said. If you don't put in that time in work, or if you get fired, then you know, you're not gonna be able to survive very easily unless you start your own kind of company, but even that, that's something that is both important and urgent. Then there are other activities you pour your time into, which are not very important, and they're not very urgent. They're like on the opposite end of the spectrum. What kind of activities are these? These are the activities I was talking about previously that most Americans, unfortunately, pour their time into. These are basically time wasters. So as I talked about previously, television, something that does not do anything for you, just provides instant gratification and stimulation. Um, maybe going out drinking, okay? Uh, playing video games, social media, things like this. They can be good in and of their own right if they can allow you to chill out, but that should not be something you spend five hours on each day, like most Americans do with television. So these are not important in the sense that if you don't do them, nothing bad's gonna happen, right? If you take your television, throw it out the window, and you never watch it again, you're not gonna die. Uh, you're not gonna lose your capability to survive. So for that reason, they're not very important. Um, on the other hand, they're not very urgent, you know? Nobody's saying, if you don't watch TV, you're in trouble, okay? You just sit down, and then it's like Medusa, right? It turns you to stone. So they're not important and they're not urgent. So these are activities that you should stray away from. You should not put importance upon them because they're not important. Don't waste your time. Don't make excuses to put your time into these things, okay? As I talked about previously, you know, coming off with excuses <laughs> and uh, complaining about things, that's the worst utilization of your time. So you want to stray away from these activities, don't invest in them, um, and set aside an appropriate amount of time for investing in activities that are both important and urgent, such as work and things that allow you to survive um, in the moment, the current moment. So what other kind of activities do we have? 
Um, let's take a look at activities that are important, but may not be as urgent. And these activities are going to be the productivity boosting activities. Okay, these increase your production capability. These are things such as going to the gym, um, reading books, honing your knowledge, increasing what you know about the world, uh, maybe practicing uh, an instrument if you're a musician. Um, basically things that allow you to produce more given your current skill set. In general, they tend to increase your skill when you invest time into them. Now the dilemma here is that they're not very urgent, okay? They're important because they allow you to produce more, but they're not urgent in the sense that, you know, you're not, you, you know, when you get done work and you think, I could go to the gym, I could, but I could do that tomorrow. So I'm gonna wait, I'm not gonna go today. I'm gonna do that tomorrow, then tomorrow comes, and you think, well, I really don't have to go there. It's not as urgent. Maybe I can get more time and work, I can stay later, and maybe I can justify my reason for not going to gym for that reason. So as you can see, you know, there's not much urgency attached to these activities. So as a result, um, these are activities we tend to push off. But what I'm going to say is, in terms of all the activities I talked about, so the activities that are important and urgent, such as work, activities that are not important, not urgent, such as time-wasting activities, and the productivity boosting activities I'm talking about now that are important but not as urgent, in order to get ahead, you need to make the time for these productivity boosting activities, okay? This means um, if you wanna get in more studying or something, you, you don't go to sleep as early, okay? Or you wake up early and go running to fit running in, or go lifting if you want to fit lifting in, okay? Uh, you need to make the time for these activities because they're going to get you to point A to point B in the shortest amount of time, okay? The most important thing you can do for yourself to get out of any kind of situation that is not conducive for what you're going for or that doesn't make you happy is to invest time in these productivity boosting activities, okay? That's the only way you're gonna make yourself better. That's the only way you're going to elevate your skill set and who you are as an individual above what you currently are, okay? So, you know, you gotta just make that time for these activities, okay? And what I'm going to say is that for every, every person, what schedule you follow, it's going to be different, okay? Somebody, might have you know, activities that are absolutely urgent, so important for work, and they find they struggle to make time for these productivity boosting activities. Other people can make time for it very easily. But you know, just thinking about this, I know you're thinking, I spend all my time doing work stuff. And you're drawn to that, okay? You're drawn to stuff that makes you survive. And that's a good thing, okay? This is, um, like an evolutionary kind of thing. This allows you to survive. But if you want a better life, if you want to take your purpose and your goals that you forged previously using my insights from my previous videos, you need to make the time for these productivity boosting activities. If you want to forge a better life, what you need to be thinking about is how can I make the time for you know, taking care of the black goose, okay? If you wanna pump out more golden eggs, you need to take care of the machine that pumps out those eggs. The only way to do that is by improving the machine, and that's done by the productivity boosting activities, okay? So work on yourself. Make that your number one priority, okay? This is the answer for getting out of any situation you're unhappy with and going to something that's elevated above your current predicament, okay? So make that time, make that time for yourself. It's going to be hard, okay? This takes effort and dedication and you have to really buy into what you're doing in order to make that extra time for these activities which are hard in and of themselves, you know? I mean, take going to the gym for example. That's hard work, okay? I'm not gonna lie to you, that's hard work. Who wants to go to the gym? 
okay? Who's gonna make time to go to the gym when you don't have the time? I wouldn't want to, but I go to the gym every single day. Why? Because I want something better for me, okay? I know that pouring effort, time, and dedication in that is gonna lead to something better. And you have to trust in that. You have to have faith in that process, okay? Faith is the operative word. And I'm gonna make a separate video on this, but you have to trust that. Because every success story in the world that I've talked about in my other videos, such as the origin of success, um, you know, everybody had to improve themselves. They had to build themselves up. And uh, the most successful people, they are dedicated to a schedule of improvement for making that time to make themselves grow into a better version or the best version of themselves that they can be, okay? So make it your standard that you're going to make the time to improve yourself, okay? You can think of it as taking time that you make and investing it in the bank for you know the better version of yourself. And when you invest that and you take advantage of compounding interest, every second you invest in improving yourself is going to have an exponential growth effect, okay? When you build that up, build that up, just like um, a snowball going down a mountain, it's gonna have momentum and uh, it's gonna make stuff happen for you, okay? So have that standard, okay? Don't take the path of least resistance and just get your production stuff done and neglect your production boosting activities. Always invest in that, always make the time. And when you do that, you're gonna have enough time in your bank, you're gonna invest enough in that, and you're gonna grow in an exponential fashion, you're gonna take massive action, be proactive, and uh, in the long run, you're gonna love what you're doing and become that person who makes the difference in everything, okay? So that's that. Um, work on ways for making your time. Uh, figure out activities such as reading. You should always be reading. I read every day. Going to the gym. Uh, you should always be going to the gym even if you don't wanna become strong because that gives you discipline. Do that every day. And I'm sure there are other activities that are linked to your goals. You know, make time for these things. And uh, I'm excited to say that when you do that, you're gonna grow into something beautiful. Um, and if you do, I'd love to hear about that email me, um, put down comments here, uh, share your story with the world, inspire people, uh, because that in and of itself is also an enjoyable thing. So that's all I have to offer for you. Um, make that time, make the difference, and you will grow into the difference.